Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. I live in the country and one of the things that takes me so much time is dealing with my yard. I've got a bunch of grass and weeds. I spend so much time trying to deal with these weeds. So one thing I've got is this sprayer here on the left and you know, you fill it up, pump it, but it, it takes me many, many hours I, and I miss most of the weeds. So I got this backpack sprayer. It's a little bit better, but really I, it doesn't work that good. So what I ended up doing recently is getting uh, the right tool for the job and this is what i'm talking about so this is a weed sprayer it's got an eight foot wide boom i pull it behind my atv i plug the battery in and i mean i'm able to cover every square inch of my lawn in less than 90 minutes so i just can't believe it took me so long to do this the right way okay and this is what my lawn looks like about a week after or two weeks after i was able to do all that so you know in the case for me having the right tool for the job it saved me so much time I was able to kill all the weeds and it was less stressful. Plus, I was able to use a tool that I already had, which was my ATV to pull the sprayer. So, you know, what if I told you that when it comes to IPR curves, that having the right tool for the job is so important, especially in unconventional wells. So uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here for IPR curves. So, you know, I, I've been using IPR curves literally for 15 years. And I usually rely on correlations like Vogel, Roland Schellen, Hart, Folkheimer, and you know they're meant for boundary dominated flow, right? For conventional wells. And what am I talking about? So let's imagine we have a high permeability reservoir, one millidarcy. If we look at the life cycle of an IPR, after a few months or maybe even shorter, the well is going to reach boundary dominated flow, and the IPR is going to stabilize. And so this IPR curve on the part on the left here, this is all during the boundary dominated flow part of the well's life. And that's where these traditional IPR methods are great. They work really well in boundary dominated flow. If we take the same high permeability well, but instead we look at its productivity uh, throughout its entire life. In transient flow, which can be very short lived, the productivity is changing. But after we reach the boundary in the reservoir, the wealth productivity is very stable. And this is where, again, the traditional IPR method works awesome. Let's change gears. What about tight or low permeability wells? Well, the IPR life cycle is much different. It is very different. The productivity of these wells is changing dramatically, not only for months, but I'm talking years. Okay, so the IPR curve for an unconventional well is changing for many, many years. So looking at this from the productivity perspective, if we have a high permeability well, it's only transient for a couple months, right? But with an unconventional well, look at this. The productivity of the well is changing for years and years and years and years. And this is why we can't use IPRs uh, in the traditional way when it comes to transient reservoir flow. And I'm sure you have tried, just like me, trying to use my weed sprayer you've tried doing it the hard way which is some sort of reservoir model a spreadsheet a back and forth let me show you how you can do this in harmony and save yourself a ton of grief so we're in harmony and you've probably already have your well bore entered you've already done your flow regime analysis in this case i'm doing a square root time and you probably have already done your reservoir model and this is where you you estimate your perm your damage your drainage area doing a history match and a forecast Okay, so how do we leverage all this to make IPR curves into the future? Well, we're going to launch a new module. It's called Optimize. It's in Harmony and it's down at the bottom. This uh, replaces what you may have used in the past called Virtual for nodal analysis. So we're just going to say launch an advanced forecast. And we're going to pick the reservoir model that we want to use to make the IPRs. and instantly we get a result. What are we looking at here? Well, the top is a gas forecast from the RTA reservoir model. And when the line becomes dashed, that is when the well is gonna liquid load. So immediately we can see when the well is gonna liquid load. 
That's benefit number one. But what's happening below? Well, this is the IPR and to be performance curve uh, at present day, basically, you know, at the end of the Wells history. And this is the Wells current operating point. And we can see that it's not liquid loaded uh, because we're, we're on the solid part of the TPC. Watch this. We're going to move the line into the future, into the forecast. And the IPR is instantly being recalculated. Let's do it again. We'll go ahead another year. There. So this is not using any sort of traditional correlation that you may have used in the past. The IPR is directly being generated from the RTA reservoir model. So it's considering transient flow in the reservoir, geomechanical effects, uh, isotherm, everything, okay? But I just can't believe how easy this is to use. So see the TPC is being updated, the operating point, it's matching everything together. What about as we approach when the well's gonna liquid load? Okay, we see that everything is corresponding here. What about after the well liquid loads? Okay, now we're in the, in the dash part of the to be performance curve. So I really think this is just game changing to produce time-based IPRs. What do you think? Um, now, what about having an array? Can we create a kind of a band of future IPRs? Yes. So all we have to do is click on this button right here. We're going to create a new worksheet. We'll call it IPR TPC range, whatever you want. And I can say, you know, let's create 10 different IPRs uh, at intervals of, you know, three months, or we can do six month intervals, whatever you want, right? And we're just going to say send. Now it's going to take a second. It's going to use again the transient RTA reservoir model to produce a series of future IPRs right now. All right, now we can go up, click on this new worksheet that's been created. And we just go to this thing that says inflow comparison here. So we can see uh, for every, you know, in this case, I picked a six month interval in the forecast. We can see every different IPR to see how this is going to change for this particular well, again, from the transient RTA reservoir model. Now, if you want to get all this stuff out to Excel, maybe you want to do some something with it that you think you can't do in Harmony, just right click and say copy. Launch your Excel spreadsheet and just click Control V or paste. And there you go. You For every uh, IPR into the future, you've got the relationship between the, uh, the expected rate and the, uh, the flowing pressure at the sand face. So for every, every date in your future. So, you know, you can copy and get these out of Harmony if you want, or you can do your own different tubing performance curve scenarios right in here and see how they're all going to look. All right, now let's look at that liquid loading. So we know the well's going to liquid load here. What can we do to prevent that? Well, I'm thinking compression, coil tubing, maybe some soap sticks. Let's try those out, okay? So I've gone ahead and scheduled uh, a compressor. So let's ch turn it on and see what's happening here to see how that's going to delay our liquid loading. All right. So now what we're seeing here is a scenario where I've scheduled a wellhead compressor. And what we're seeing is this is when uh, I scheduled the compressor to happen right, right around the time the well's going to liquid load. And we can see as a rate response, the RTA reservoir model will predict the new rate at the lower bottom hole flowing pressure. Uh, now, the dash line is when the well's liquid loading, but again, when we install the compressor, we increase the velocity, both at the wellhead and at the end of tubing, and that will solve our liquid loading problem at least for a couple of years. So now we can see our new delayed liquid loading by scheduling compression in Harmony. And again, the IPR and TPCs are instantly going to be produced for you. And you see, we're about to liquid load. We install and schedule the compression. And now the new tubing performance curve is generated based on those future conditions. Amazing. Now, what do we do about liquid loading here? Well, why don't we try changing the tubing size? So I'm going to turn off my compressor scenario. We'll turn on our coil tubing and compression scenario and see what's going to happen there. All right, so same thing, install compression, liquid loading is delayed. And then here, I've been scheduled coil tubing to be installed, again, using the RTA reservoir model as the engine to drive all of this. And we get our new tubing performance curve instantly generated for us 
and we can see our expected operating conditions. So I just really find this so user friendly and I hope you do. The fact that we're leveraging the RTA work that's already been done is such a huge plus. Honestly, with an optimized license, you don't have to enter anything. You just launch it and you get the results from your RTA model. Now at the time of this recording, it's uh, June 2021. What I'm showing you works for the analytical reservoir models in RTA. And we're working to develop it for the numerical models. We're almost ready. And actually the paper that I'm showing you here is something that we presented at Urtec. And this is leveraging the Harmony's numerical multi-phase flow reservoir models, which are gonna be creating the IPR curves uh, in the future as a free upgrade for our, our Harmony customers, okay? So just keep an eye open for this. Now, what does everything I've shown you here really mean to you? Well, time-based IPRs, matter when you're in transient flow. I mean, they, ma they matter where, when you're in boundary dominated flow too, but they're especially complicated because of the productivity changing in transient flow. So I showed you how you can instantly produce them from your RTA model. When will the well liquid load? That, that's been something that's been a very cumbersome thing to produce. When will the well liquid load? And we can do that instantly leveraging your RTA models. Compression coil tubing, maybe changing from casing to installing tubing. These are things, again, we can instantly get results by leveraging the RT model when we combine it with Optimize, like I showed you here today. You know, I'm a huge fan of, of getting and squeezing more value out of something I've already done. That's exactly what you're going to be able to do if you already have an RTA reservoir model built. Okay. So just like me, you know, weeds were a huge time-consuming thing of my life in my yard dealing with them. I was doing this the old way. You, maybe you're using some sort of spreadsheet way to do what I'm showing you now, but it's so inconvenient and it just doesn't work that good. So what I did is I got the right tool for the job, which for me was this awesome weed sprayer. I'm less stressed. I was able to do it and I was able to do it right. And that's what I'm proposing you can do by having the right tool for the job, combining RTA and optimize for time-based IPRs. And that's it. Thanks so much for your time and stay tuned for the next episode of the Did You Know series. Thank you.